All right. Um, good evening, everyone, and welcome to Manhattan Community Board 3. Uh, Public Safety Transportation Environment Committee meeting for January of 2021, January 20th. Uh, this is later than we normally met in uh, recent uh, months. We normally meet on the, I believe, the second Tuesday of each month. But we are meeting on a Wednesday. Uh, we did need to get this committee meeting in um, this month. We did have the town hall a uh, couple uh, last week. So I am very grateful for everyone coming in and uh, for that. Uh, that being said, the let's go after the first agenda item, which is approval of the minutes. Um, was there any objections with the minutes from last month? No, 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 no. We got all no's, all no's. Oh, love it. Good way to start. Um, Wendy, go ahead. We can go with attendance. Paul Rango. <clears throat> Here. Michelle Coopersmith. Here. Wendy Lee, here. Lee Berman. Lee Berman. He, he has a thumbs up. He yeah. has a thumbs up. Oh, He's okay. Good. Here, thank you. Thank you. David Crane. Here. Felicia Cruikshank. I'll see you wrong. Okay. Ellen Lowe. Here. And Tariq is running late, right? He's not here yet? Yeah, you have to mark him absent for right now. Um, he's okay. got to get on by 7 o'clock. I appreciate him reaching out, but he's absent. Okay, got it. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, um, before we dive into the agenda, we do have uh, two main items, and we'll get to those in a minute. Uh, but Trevor Holland uh, asked uh, for some time today for some public comment um on some dot issues so trevor i believe i saw you get on the call um two minutes is yours thank you and i'm going to try and keep this under two minutes by reading fairly quickly good evening and thank you for listening i'm speaking today as president of my resident association and president of tough les i've lived on south street for the last 23 years and i've seen many changes i'm here to ask for support and agenda placement for an issue that has troubled my neighborhood for the past two decades we're once again examining the South Street parking and traffic issues, especially in light of COVID-19 and related environmental issues. Of the many, one particular issue now concerns us as the construction permits start to expire. Extel has indicated that they are no longer seeking an extension of the no standing construction permit on South Street from Pike Cliff to Rutgers Slip. The previous regulations, which was suspended for the last five years or so, allowed buses to park on a half of the block previously fronted a path mark, although this entire stretch, uh, this although this entire stretch also served as a Wild West type parking lot for all types of buses, many of them idling and never following any regulations. The situation in this block has now dramatically changed. Over 1,000 new apartments were added to this, to this segment alone, with 200 units dedicated to low income and previously homeless, not to mention the nearly 3,000 new, new units proposed for this two block area. This entire block is now all residential. Putting back the old bugger bus regulations would be tantamount to environmental injustice, especially considering the city's pivot towards eradicating inequality, especially in hard hit COVID neighborhoods like Zip 1002, one of the most affected in all of Manhattan. What we're asking for as a neighborhood is fairly simple and in the best interest of people who actually live here. Absolutely no bus parking on this residential stretch. We already have the FDR drive and the, that, the pollution that that generates. Also, MTA buses, as there are seven there right now, queue this block before heading down to the Fidei Wall Street area, unfettered from the no standing signs. We'd like the change of regulations to allow normal alternate side parking, similar to the same regs, further up on South Street near Catholic Ship in front of the residential Knight Smith House. COVID has changed the way we all operate, but we simply cannot go back to the status quo when it comes to these situations. Thank you. Thank you, Trevor. Um, just a quick question for you. Um, is this something you want us to put on, on an agenda item at some point in the next two months? Yes, but I'm a little intimidated by Michelle's presentation that she did last week. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get the video and nice picture, but yes, I would like to see it. <laughs> Maybe I can get you two to collaborate on it and uh, we could put a little uh, we could put a little movie together, something like that. 
But thank you, Trevor. Um, let me know specifically in the office uh, about how we can best assist you and put it on the put it on our calendar. Sure, and I've already uh, uh, put the request in for DOT to take a look at it. Awesome. Thank you so much. Appreciate you coming on. Thank you for listening. Yep. Uh, okay. So just a quick reminder to everybody, um, I know there's a lot of people on the call tonight, community board members, as well as um, members of the community, as well as members of the uh, Department of Transportation. If you just signed into the chat with your affiliation and if you want to speak on any agenda item, um, I know there's one major agenda item people want to speak on tonight. So we're going to get to that in a minute. Um, I do want to welcome Jennifer uh, from DOT, who will and her team who will be doing the presentation for our next agenda item, which is the Gateways to Chinatown project. Um, just a little brief reference. I know I sent a earlier presentation out to the committee um, on Sunday night. Um, that has changed. I know there's a different presentation that will be shown to us tonight. Um, I, does anybody need to share their screen per se or with that presentation from DOT? Hi, Paul, uh, this, this is Jennifer. Um, oh, it's all right. Yeah, right, Nick and Tanana should get the presenter rights for the presentation, but let me give an intro first and then we'll get to the presentation itself. Sure, go right ahead. The floor is yours. Thank you. So good evening, everyone. My name is Jennifer Leung from DOT's Manhattan Borough Commissioner's Office. I want to thank you all for joining us today for our presentation of the updated design proposal for the Gateways to Chinatown uh, Canal Street Triangle Project. So we have been uh, planning and designing for this uh, project for quite some time. It has been driven by key stakeholder feedback that we have been gathering during numerous roundtables, um, workshops, surveys, and community meetings over the last few years. Since we last came to the board, our team have been working very hard to refine and update our design proposal. And now we are excited to share the design with you today. I am joined by my DOT colleagues from the urban design team, uh, Neil Gagliardi, and also Nick Pennai, as well as Karen Patterson. Um, at this point, I will turn it over to uh, Neil um, if you like to, you know, introduce the project and go through the background and into the presentation. Thank you. Yeah, whoever wants to start the presentation, go right ahead. Hi. Can you hear me now? Um, yes. Good, good evening, board members. You would think by now, I, I know. Um, good, uh, good evening, board members and stakeholders and neighborhood residents. I'm Neil Galliardi from uh, DOT. I'm the director of urban design at DOT. And we wanted to just start off by just providing a little bit of a background of this project. As Jennifer said, we've been working on this for a number of years. And for I, I could say for close to 10 years, uh, DOT has been collaborating with the Chinatown Partnership to formulate a comprehensive planning and design strategy. Uh, and this uh, kind of re represents it, it we, we call it Gateways to Chinatown, uh, identifying and highlighting uh, seven identified portals and focal points of the neighborhood. And um, the, the site that we're talking about uh, really has been the subject of um, a lot of discussion, a lot of studies and planning efforts, and it's been decades in the making. Um, dating all the way back to 1974, I think we could say, uh, with the Chinatown Street uh, revitalization study. And um, in the next slide, I think, just gets us back to uh, where we are. It's a rather small uh, triangle. Um, at, at the heart of this uh, system of, of portals and gateways into Chinatown, uh, and really at the middle of it, um, it's uh, bounded by uh, Walker and Baxter and uh, Canal Streets. Uh, it's, as you know, uh, it's a very small site with many constraints and historically just uh, kind of a crossroads, a triangle formed by the, the um, convergences of the street grid. Um, we, we, over the past uh, at least three, four years, we, we've uh, conducted a number of uh, workshops and meetings and surveys, uh, and a, a lot of the community perspectives were, were encapsulated in the eventual request for proposals that was issued in uh, 2017, which uh, kind of identified a number of these uh, uh, priorities, wayfinding and orientation, priorities for the neighborhood, it's, uh, for the uh, uh, triangle itself, and what it could achieve uh, and what it represents. 
uh, particularly wayfinding and orientation, um, cultural identity. Uh, what was also important was to a lot of the uh, respondents and participants was community information and a place for digital connectivity, uh, which we'll talk about a little later. Um, there was also um, a, a, a real desire for more green space. The, the, the site is, does have uh, five existing rather healthy uh, ginkgo trees um, and that, that seemed to be a, a appreciated by a number of, of the participants. And really just looking at this site as a, a place of social interaction. These again were part of the RFP that was issued in um, uh, uh, 2017. And um, you'll recall, uh, many of you were there and have been involved uh, in the summer of, of 2019, we, uh, we, we, um, we came to the, the, the community board uh, uh, community Board 3 and Community Board 1, and uh, we announced uh, the winner of over 80 uh, respondents called the uh, Dragon's Roar, which was uh, a proposal uh, that really achieved uh, the highest scores based on the uh, procurement uh, rules and um, uh, criteria set forth in the uh, uh, RFP. Uh, and the, the Dragon's Roar was uh, proposed by a, a team called UAP, uh, which included um, uh, the architectural firm Levin Betts and the Australian Chinese artist um, uh, Lindy Lee. And as I said, we 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 launched, we announced the the, the winning proposal of the RFP in 2018-2019, and did a series of meetings and to present the proposal. I don't, I don't mind admitting that, that the proposal was quite um, bold and it, 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 it um, received a number of rather incisive feedback from participants and, and the community boards. In particular, Community Board 1 uh, kind of articulated that, uh, the, uh, that uh, this, stall, this tall steel iconic structure uh, uh, was generating many negative comments about what, that it didn't uh, reflect the heritage or special character of Chinatown or the community or L Little Italy or Lower East Side. Um, so, you know, we took, a after a series of the meetings, we took a step back and heard uh, 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 and proceeded to conduct a lot of more intimate roundtables. Uh, some, some of the people uh, at, at this meeting tonight were part of that, those discussions. And um, you know what we came out of those roundtables, which was really instructive for the, the design team as well as DOT, was that it, the, the, really the Dragon's Roar proposal really didn't resonate uh, clearly with with the community and its context. Uh, and I think one of one of the, some of the the recommendations that came out of that was that the design should really focus on the spatial organization and function rather than this. Uh, uh, sculptural iconography, and uh, we were urged to make the effort yield a more simple or informal place of exchange to carve out space for community interaction and really to, uh, to create a ground plane that would be flexible and afford effective programming from the neighborhood itself. Uh, and some of the design goals that came out of that more specifically were a focus on circulation. Uh, clearly the site it's small and circulation is rather difficult because of the tree bed uh, and, and the kiosk. Um, th there was also um, uh, an interest in creating a kind of protective buffer along Canal Street to protect uh, uh, users and pedestrians from, from the noise and the traffic of Canal Street. And um, again, this kind of creation of flexible programmable areas to allow the neighborhood to inhabit uh, the space uh, more readily um, and, and let, it, let the neighborhood itself express itself through the space of exchange. Um, so we, again, we, we took a deep breath after these meetings, um, you know, and, and uh, of course the, the, the pandemic unfortunately set in as well. And it, it gave us a, a real uh, moment of pause to see how we could move forward and be responsive to the community boards, residents and, and stakeholders and how the space could be 
uh, resonant for, for, for the larger community. So we, um, we, we actually took the design more in-house uh, and uh, uh, kind of looked at a number of, of options. There were three options that we presented. And most recently we had a, a community meeting, uh, stakeholder meeting uh, on, in December, on December 2nd. I think Susan Stetzer and others on this uh, meeting you know, were participants in that. Um, and also the, uh, the uh, elected official offices were represented and a number of neighborhood residents participants. We presented three options that were really um, alternatives uh, or hybrids among uh, the site that really looked at, one was looking at the existing kiosk and how can we retain the kiosk and per perhaps, um, uh, uh, I think we lost the site, but uh, retain the kiosk and, and improve circulation in and around it. The other was uh, called the Bosque, which really saw the uh, trees, the existing trees as an as, as a iconic element and valuable element of the space to be retained. And then uh, procession was the third option where, where we really did look at a, a, a much more open plan to allow people uh, to uh, move from east to west along the site from uh, Baxter to, to, to Mulberry Street. Um, I think Nick uh, is frozen, um, who's controlling the, uh, there we go. Um, and I, I do want to mention that the stakeholder meeting was really very instructive. We had breakout sessions and we did a lot of polling about preferences. Uh, and if uh, just to summarize what those preferences and takeaways are in, on the next slide. Um, just to go through some of these. Uh, uh, I think what was most rewarding for, for us was an acknowledgement that we were being responsive to uh, a lot of the feedback we got and community input in the community boards. Um, and that's always rewarding. Um, uh, th there was an express preference for the planted areas um, and the Bosque of Trees, uh, particularly uh, in option two. Um, and a, a lot of people discussed that the space is more a meeting point and an east-west east circulation uh, connector rather than a place for relaxation like a park. Um, and, and then there, there were a lot of questions and discussions about the existing kiosk, how it functions. Um, a lot of, uh, of uh, participants thought that the uh, existing kiosk is not a significant draw and doesn't serve the greater community, uh, although it, 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 it does serve a kind of um, tourist uh, function. Uh, as, as it was intended to do. And uh, what was significant in which we're working on now is uh, there was a strong preference for an interactive digital kind of interface that was current, that provided engaging information, visual engagement and, uh, uh, and information for, for the community. So uh, uh, we're, we're developing that further. Uh, we took the designs, uh, the same designs to the P Public Design Commission uh, later in, uh, in December. And um, there was a clear preference from the Design Commission for, for again, the Bosque option, uh, uh, allowing the trees uh, more room and space uh, and, and, and focus. Um, mostly because uh, the acknowledgement that they are miraculously healthy given the circumstances. Um, there was a definite feeling uh, from the Public Design Commission that the kiosk existing obstructs circulation. And the theme that came out was, again, improving east-west connections and circulation through the site, um, and which has become a major goal of ours. Um, and uh, I know we, we've discussed this at, at a number of the breakouts. Uh, you know, uh, the Design Commission though felt you know, we should add as many trees as we can in the small space to create um, cover, um, they, but specifically they asked uh, that we, we explore um, options to the existing kiosks that, are, that would be more dynamic and create more community engagement. Uh, so that's where I think, did we lose Nick again? <laughs> um, 
No, we do. Here we Hi, Neil. I'll, I'll forward and talk until Nick comes back on. Okay. Um, so, so basically, that's 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 the background. I mean, we we've been at this for a number of years, uh, uh, and I, I think we now have a, a, a synthesis of a lot of uh, that is responsive to a lot of the input that we've received over time, and also from the design commission most recently. Um, do you want to go, Karin, to the next slide? Um, so. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll just, uh, until we get back, Nick, because um, I'll, I'll just talk. I mean, the development of this design, I mean, on the left-hand side is the existing uh, condition um, with the, the nine by nine kiosk and the, the uh, grove of trees. Um, and I, I will mention that be, be, because of, uh, to improve some of the circulation a, a couple of years ago, we did expand the sidewalk along Canal Street as much as we could. Um, which which allows that uh, to happen on the on the right side is the proposed uh, basic design which is really retaining the existing uh, gingo trees and creating a kind of planted buffer along Canal Street and uh, in this scenario uh, I mean uh, the existing kiosk would be removed to allow east west connection through the site and we'll see some of the other uh, renderings of a more dynamic, uh, board, um, Nick is back, uh, a more dynamic um, uh, replacement of the kiosk uh, in the form of a digital interface. Uh, Nick, do you want to take over? Can you? Sure. Can you all hear me? I, I am terribly sorry. For whatever reason, my internet is uh, not holding up particularly well. Um, continue to share the screen actually that would be great and I will continue to run through the presentation I, again I am very embarrassed I apologize for the technical troubles Nick can you prompt me uh, when you want me to change slides that would be helpful will do. thank you so Nick okay, I, I so just went through like the options that we did present to the stakeholders in December and to the Design Commission, and this is kind of the synthesis and preference that we're working on. Great, yes. And again, thank you, community board members and stakeholders. Uh, really appreciate the opportunity to. Uh, I know we very diligently our December second stakeholder meeting, uh, as well as sort of taking the feedback from that meeting, as well as the guidance uh, that was from the Public Design Commission, uh, and, and really trying to refine that into an option that reflects the comments that we heard. Uh, so you can see on the screen right now, uh, the most recent version of our proposed design. Uh, the existing condition is represented on the left that shows the current kiosk, the grove of ginkgo trees and the planting bed. And on the right is our proposed design. Uh, again, those of you that were at the stakeholder meeting, this will seem familiar to you. I'll get into some of the revisions that we've made from that December 2nd meeting in just a couple slides. Karin, if you go to the next one. So uh, first and foremost, and uh, again, I think we've been focusing on this now for quite some time. And as Neil had mentioned in, in uh, earlier parts of the presentation, uh, one of our primary goals is really to facilitate circulation through the site. Uh, and looking at ways that we can do that. So the, the BOSC option uh, really takes uh, that to heart and focuses on uh, removing the existing planting bed, but preserving the existing trees so that we can now circulate through that space in a, in a much more simple manner. Uh, also uh, removing the kiosk obviously frees up a significant amount of circulation on the west side of the triangle. Uh, so this diagram starts to show just sort of the existing circulation paths and how we've tried to shift those patterns, uh, protect people a little bit from the heavy traffic that's on Canal Street and give them a, a more pleasant experience in walking through this site, uh, while still also maintaining some of those really important north-south spaces and opportunities for gathering and reflection. Next. So getting into the specifics of the design, uh, again, on the eastern half of the triangle, uh, we've preserved the existing five king trees you see in the lighter uh, tan pavement, uh, also supposed to represent a permeable pavement. So it's uh, a surface that, again, you can traverse, 
but it allows for uh, water and air to get to the tree roots below and a growing volume for those tree roots. We're adding two additional ginkgo trees along Canal Street to sort of round out that overall Bosque feeling, uh, as well as some understory plantings in the green area that's highlighted. Uh, and then on the western part of the triangle, this is really focused more on uh, freeing the space up, uh, introducing the opportunity for additional programming. Uh, we've got a fixed seating element that's on the sort of south part of the triangle, the Walker Street side, along with a planting bed and uh, an ornamental tree. We're thinking something along the lines of a cherry tree uh, for, for context. And then on the north side, what we're really envisioning is sort of a 21st century version of uh, a kiosk, a digital information kiosk. So we, we heard, I think, from the stakeholders that the, the service that the kiosk provides is really valuable uh, in that it, it gives you an ability to interact with somebody, to learn about the neighborhood, uh, and to, to gather that kind of information. But the footprint of the kiosk is obviously a, a big concern in terms of how the function of this overall triangle works. So we're envisioning replacing that kiosk with a, an interactive digital screen that would allow for that same sort of interacting with a person, albeit it would be on a digital screen, um, but there'd still be that real time possibility, as well as then the flexibility to introduce a whole suite of cultural programming to the site uh, and, and really allow it to be something that adapts to the site over the course of a single day, as well as over the course of a, a year. So the, the rest of the slide will, uh, the rest of the presentation will start to get into some of those details uh, and explain it in a more visual way. So Karin, next. Uh, so we've uh, created a 3D model of the, the site and uh, how we think this, uh, the, the design will play out. This is a, a bird's eye view. Uh, we're looking uh, sort of from the intersection of Walker and Baxter uh, down at the triangle. You can see the sort of digital information screen uh, and the sort of gateway that you would walk through on the western side of the triangle and then the grove of ginkgo trees on the, the rightmost portion. Uh, if you go to the next slide. Uh, now getting down to eye level, again, this is sort of that uh, same position on Walker Street as you're crossing, giving you a sense of what this space will start to look like, uh, how we can uh, really free up circulation through the space by making some of those simple moves around the ginkgo trees, uh, and then create a, a really interesting and dynamic moment with this new digital information uh, kiosk. Uh, if you go to the next slide. And then these are some additional views now on the triangle. The one on the left is looking at sort of the narrow end of the triangle and how you can start to circulate through that Bosque. Uh, and then the view on the right is on the triangle looking at the digital information screen. Uh, again, I think we're really trying to uh, achieve those goals of, of circulation, uh, buffer flexibility and use uh, and creating a place for exchange. Uh, if you go to the next slide. And then here, we just wanted to give you all a sense of what it might look like from uh, approaching the triangle from sort of those other views. So the one on the left is as you're crossing Canal, the, the one in the middle is if you're crossing Baxter, uh, and then the one on the right is if you're crossing Walker. Uh, and so now we'll get into a little bit more of the detail on some of the key design elements. So the next slide. This focuses on the, the digital information kiosk. So uh, again, this is a comment that I think we heard from both the stakeholders uh, in that stakeholder meeting on December 2nd, as well as the design commission, that uh, really uh, ensuring something that is digital and interactive and dynamic uh, were, were key takeaways that we took from those meetings. Uh, I think previously at that December 2nd meeting, we were leaning, we were leaning more towards a static information sign, uh, and that really didn't resonate. So we, we've spent the last uh, month, month and a half, uh, delving into the technology, seeing what products are available. Uh, certainly this technology already exists on city streets. If you look at the Link NYC kiosks, some of the bus shelters and newsstands that exist around the city. Uh, and there's plenty of precedent at a very large scale in terms of building billboards and screens that we see, uh, not only in New York, but across the country. And there's lots of examples in other countries of this digital information kiosk uh, and the, the technology continues to advance and advance. Uh, 
Uh, so we know that it's possible. Uh, again, we're still in the design development phase, so this will continue to evolve uh, as we, we get more and more into the details. Um, but we, we think this is really a, an important way to deliver on some of those comments uh, and feedback that we received. Uh, if you go to the next slide. Uh, in terms of the structure, uh, again, we're, we're really trying to think through from a massing perspective and a spatial perspective, what makes sense on the triangle? Should we proceed with one sort of large monolithic screen that uh, allows for different functions in, in different parts of the screen, but ultimately communicates one sort of large uh, uh, plane? Uh, or uh, one of the other options that we've started to think about is if we start to break that up into smaller spaces uh, that might allow for differential programming uh, or uh, sort of a, a different uh, cadence of uh, programming and, and uh, it displays to be to be shown on those screens. Uh, and then the next slide. Uh, we are very much uh, thinking through content and, and what that would mean and sort of the, the three main buckets that we've been talking through is sort of the, the cultural programming, look at uh, looking at historical pro, uh, historical content, uh, art, uh, and whether that's permanent or rotating, uh, again, the digital uh, screen gives us the ability to be really flexible with how long a particular exhibit is up uh, or how often it cycles through for people and for users of the site. Uh, certainly wayfinding uh, and the sort of information exchange has been a, a key point for us. Uh, I think we've heard time and time again that the wayfinding map that we put on the existing kiosks is uh, very well appreciated. I know I've heard the anecdote that the, uh, the uh, you are here has been worn away because people point and uh, touch the map so often that it's now no longer visible. Uh, so we think that that wayfinding component is obviously really important. Uh, and again, a, a digital interface really gives us even more flexibility with how users can interact with that kind of a system. Uh, and then we are certainly entertaining the possibility of sponsorship uh, and how that may uh, help contribute to the long-term maintenance and success of a piece of infrastructure like this. Um, next slide. Uh, and then lastly, on the digital information piece, we do see it as something that starts to set a uh, precedent and serve as really a template for the other gateways so that all of these gateways start to link together in terms of their programming and content. Uh, obviously, we've not explored those other sites in any detail, but we think it's really important that the content be focused not only on the Canal Street Triangle, but ultimately on how uh, the overall gateways to Chinatown really work as a system. Next. So then uh, transitioning to the other side of the triangle, the, the Bosque of Trees. Uh, again, this slide gets into a little bit more of the detail in terms of what we're thinking here. Uh, if any of you have been to Four Freedoms Park on Roosevelt Island, this is a, a very similar concept where we're looking at more of a, a bonded aggregate pavement, not loose stones by any means, stuff that will stay fixed in place, but that is permeable. Uh, and so it allows for ultimately a smaller tree pit opening uh, and increased circulation through the site. That would be paired with a really robust treatment of the soil volume that the existing trees are utilizing. We wanna make sure that we're preserving and expanding that to the greatest extent possible so that those trees can continue to be healthy. Uh, and so we would look at a suspended soil system or suspended paving system or structural soil, something that really allows roots to grow throughout the triangle, expanding the overall amount of space that they have to grow in from what's there currently, while still allowing, again, that circulation at the surface. Next. Uh, and then one of the other key elements that we're looking at and uh, really think this is a, a great way to knit the two halves of the triangle together is lighting. Uh, and thinking about a, a system that uh, really speaks to uh, the context and allows for also seasonality and flexibility, uh, the opportunity for potential artistic intervention, uh, as well as just overall improving the pedestrian experience as, as we move through this site. Uh, and so this is a, a, a catenary light system uh, that's being proposed uh, again, I think we're thinking about the infrastructure on the site, the poles really being multifunctional, uh, as well as that overall support system so that it's not necessarily just for lighting, but really serves as an armature for the overall design. Next. 
Uh, and then lastly, we wanted to spend a little bit of time talking with you all about the uh, construction phasing uh, and how we're thinking through this. Uh, again, we're very much advocating for a uh, full implementation of the design as shown, but we also wanna make sure that we can deliver a project with the amount of funds that we have programmed currently. Uh, so we have taken a look at how that starts to play out uh, at a preliminary level. This is obviously the existing condition. Uh, if you go to the next slide, you'll see what we're proposing as a phase one. Uh, and so the, the idea is we would focus our phase one efforts really on the sort of infrastructure improvements on the eastern part of the triangle, uh, where we would uh, make those circulation improvements to the existing uh, ginkgo trees, add the buffer on that portion, uh, and then leave the existing kiosk in place so that we are still uh, providing that service to the community. Uh, if you go to the next slide, you'll see uh, how, from a circulation perspective, uh, we're really improving the ability to walk through that eastern part of the triangle. Uh, there would be significant benefits from a pedestrian circulation perspective. Uh, and then if you go to the next slide, you'll see a, uh, a couple views of what this starts to look like. So again, the existing kiosk would be preserved. Uh, if you go to the next slide, you can see how from the opposite end, you're now able to really circulate through that site uh, in an improved fashion uh, with the ability to now sort of pick your own route through the, the grove of trees. And then if you go to the next slide, uh, certainly if you're approaching it from the other end, again, instead of running into a planting bed uh, and being squeezed between that and the existing kiosk, you'll have a, a much easier time sort of free flowing through that Eastern part of the triangle. And then if you go to the next slide, uh, then phase two uh, would really allow us to come in and reimagine the kiosk for that 21st century setting where we're uh, able to transform its current use into a digital information uh, platform and a, and a much more dynamic uh, and interactive physical setting. Uh, and I think the last slide is just a, a rendering to, to settle on. Um, again, just giving an, an overall uh, view of the, the design as we see it. So uh, really thank you again for, for uh, letting me go through this and I apologize for the earlier technical difficulties. Thank you. All right, that's a lot to take in. You know, it's vastly changed from that July presentation that came before our committee uh, last <laughs> year. Um, that being said, uh, for the way I'm going to work this out is uh, committee will have first shot at questions as long as other as well as other board members, um, and then I will go to the public. I will um, go to the ra raise your hand, and I will try to call on as many of you as possible. Um, I, I'm going to just start off. Um, this is for anybody, um, what are your deadlines, timetables? I know there's some funding deadlines that you have to. Uh, that you need from us. Like I know there's actual um, timetables that you have to figure out um, and what kind of support do you need from this committee uh, tonight? So maybe I'll answer that. Um, you know, our, our primary uh, design uh, funding has, is coming from HUD through the Lower Manhattan Development Corporation. Um, we we um, renegotiated our uh, agreement with uh, LMDC for, for the completion of design, and that's targeted for um, April and May of this year. Uh, and we, we have not uh, determined, um, you know, a construction schedule uh, that would be done in May uh, based on, on the approved design. All right, thank you. Um, first committee member I see hand up is Ella. Go ahead, Ellen. Hi, um, I would like to congratulate the team on this improved design. Um, it seems like you've heard and really paid attention to some of the feedback that was provided um, the first round. Um, I would like to caution the team in terms of your next steps um, and the, on the specifics of the design um, to be aware of um, orientalizing approaches to the design and perhaps um, avoid tired tripes and stereotypes, um, something that would embrace a more open and dynamic approach that reflects a 
diverse and contemporary Chinese American community in, in New York in both form and function. And also something specific um, as someone who has grown up um, in Chinatown and made the, the walks around that area countless times, um, it would be great if part of the consideration for the redesign is to add um, another extra set of lights or walk sign because there's a, a stop sign on Walker and Baxter which drivers take as mere suggestions. And so if you're expecting a lot of people to cross from one side of, from um, Baxter as they're crossing towards canal. Um, so the, of course the canal portion um, has lights, right? It has a walk sign, but not the portion on Walker Street. Um, so if you're expecting a lot of people to go back and forth, um, I've had some very dangerous, um, stop and run situations I've witnessed. So perhaps if we can think about that as well, because if this triangle becomes an attraction to everyone in the community, then I would think that we might put some awareness around safety and directing traffic. Ellen, you meant traffic lights, correct? Yes, traffic lights. Okay, okay. Yeah, I, I think that's definitely something that we can we can continue to take a look at as we get into more of the details. Thank you for those comments. Okay, I'm gonna go to, I see Susan with her hand up and then I'm gonna go to Lee Berman who can't raise his hand. So Susan and then Lee. Okay, thank you. Um, I have two things. One, I'm sorry if I missed this. Um, did we lose all, all benches and all seating? Nick, can you guys you not hear me? I, you, I think the question was, did we lose all benches and all seating? Right, that, that was one of yeah. the options. It... Uh, so no, we, we are preserving uh, fixed seating uh, along the sort of Western part of the triangle in that South sort of semi-circle planting bed. We, are, we do think that there's a value to uh, at least having some seating for those who wanna stop, have a coffee, you know, uh, take, in, uh, take in the sites. Okay, thank you. I, that's what I thought was a result from the stakeholder meeting. So thank you for confirming that. The other one comment I wanted to make, um, I thought the way you held those meetings in December were really great, you know, with the breakout rooms and really getting input and, um, you know, offering options and getting input from people. And I'm wondering if there's value um, in continuing that, if there is a need like when you actually look at specific designs and that sort of thing. Yeah, I mean, I, I think Susan, it was, we agree it was really constructive for all of us and, and really um, illustrative. Um, I, I, I think, you know, we wanna be judicious about our, our, our meetings and time, but, um, you know, we'll, we, we can consider at, at a certain pivotal point you know, um, as, as the design evolves, like when, when that might be appropriate. Um, you know, even talking about uh, seating, like, you know, some of the refinements of the design are yet to come. And I think those are the things that we are seeking some input as well uh, from the community. Okay, thank that, you. you. Lee yeah, Berman. No, I, oh, sorry. Oh, go, go ahead, Nick, uh, and then I'll go to Lee. Thanks. No, I, I was just going to echo that sentiment and that I, I think we're, we're definitely uh, going to try to target coming back to the community for some of the specific design elements. I think we're hoping to use this forum to really make sure that we're on the right track for the overall design approach uh, and that those sort of key pieces can really move forward given our timeline. All right, Lee Berman. <laughs> I want to thank the DOT for taking into consideration all the community uh, concern that was raised at our last community board meeting. This really goes to show uh, how, how much can be accomplished by working together and taking into, into account uh, communities involvement. So really, I do appreciate that. The one question I have um, about this design is what about, what about funding for upkeep? For example, these digital screens. My concern would be about potential vandalism um, and 
will there be money to maintain them going forward? So, you know, uh, funding is always the issue and, and certainly now, now more than ever with um, a lot of uh, our projects being suspended. Um, but th that is something that, that's why we, we went to the, uh, the, the method of a, a two phase effort because clearly we, we, we currently have uh, enough funding for the, the restoration of the, the, the trees and the, the, the first phase of the site. But this element in particular really requires a special focus. I mean, we know this could be, tend to be expensive. We want it to be really focused and appropriate for the size. So, um, you know, we, we would have to uh, first put the design forward that is cost effective yet, um, uh, you know, responsive, and then see see what funds could be uh, allocated to 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 constructing that in phase two. And I, and I guess I'll I'll just jump in on the the maintenance front. I think we are trying to be very conscious of that concern on the design side. That's why we are still going through explorations of what the mass uh, and you know size shape. Uh, form of those screens really take. Uh, we are working closely with the local business improvement district that's currently maintaining the site uh, and wanna make sure that we can deliver something that's within their capacity. Uh, and again, that's also one of the other avenues that we are exploring is the, the sort of sponsorship model that would allow for some revenue uh, again, it's not advertising. We're not trying to, to allow any sort of big box store or whatever to, to put stuff on the screen. I think we want it to be very uh, local, very targeted. Um, but I, I think that sponsorship model is another avenue to potentially allow for a more sustainable uh, care of the, the, this piece of infrastructure in particular. Lee, do you have anything else? No, okay. Um, before I go to the community, I do see a community board members up uh, hand up. May Lee, go right ahead. Um, hi there. So yeah, I was also at that meeting in September. I mean, uh, in June 2019. Although it seemed like so, I thought it was like three years ago, but it was only you know like less <laughs> it does, than it does two seem years like ago. A long time ago. <laughs> right. Um, but so I'm glad to see this design. Um, and I had a question about um, the eastern end of the triangle. You know, you're supposed to be able to cross like over the canal and in the map, the little, the, the little, the, the, the a diagram you, you showed, um, there's a crosswalk stripes, right? Although I think, I don't know, maybe the crosswalk stripes have gotten like beaten up, but they don't seem to be there. But so, and then there's a stop sign, I think over there, but it's probably not that visible to drivers from the trees. So I don't know if it will be more visible or will it be safer to cross over the canal at the eastern end of the triangle? Will it somehow be made safer? Um, so I, I guess uh, maybe I'm a, a touch confused because I, I know that uh, the main crossing at canal is at Baxter, which is more the, the western part of the triangle. The narrow side of the triangle is actually only crossing Walker Street to uh, to the other side where we've actually done a painted curb extension in our, our operational materials. Um, I think we can- It's not you know, Walker we... Street. That's like over to the middle, of, yeah, the eastern end, right? I, the narrow sorry, maybe... side, the eastern end with all the ginkgo trees. Right, yeah, do you maybe... see my yellow line here? Is, is that, I don't know if this is- yeah, that's where uh, Walker meets Canal, where they merge. Is that where you're talking about, May? Yes, yes, we're... Oh, Maybe. um... Nick, do so, you have, can you yeah, go back so, to the, the, the aerial, yeah. maybe? Can everyone see the aerial? Yes. So people are supposed to really just cross at Baxter? <laughs> yes, or at, Mo the... or, or at Mulberry. Uh, and and there's there's just that connection, um, you know, to, to cross. No, uh, I meant Mulberry. I, I'm, I'm, I must mean Mulberry then. Oh, uh, yes. OK. So like closer to Mulberry. It's not quite at Mulberry, right? 
like the narrow side, or the not the wide side, but the narrow side. So are, are, are you saying that that, that crossing is in a, not adequate? Well, I, when I cross, it doesn't seem to be very mm -hmm. adequate. So I don't know if I'm not really supposed to be crossing at all or, or you know. And then, then in the diagram, I thought I saw, maybe, maybe I saw it wrong. I don't have the, the, you don't have it up there right now, but I thought I saw these white stripes, you know, um, going towards Mulberry. I'm wrong? No, you, you are supposed to be able to cross there. Uh, that oh. that is that is a crossing, but it's I guess it's you're right. It's where Walker is meeting canals. So I, I viewed it more as crossing Walker as opposed to crossing the the many lanes of Canal Street. Uh, I think we can cer certainly take to, a look to at the that. South, to, you know, not to the north side, but to the south side. I mean, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's just like one lane. It's not many lanes. You know, I think we 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 should take a you know of course we'll take another look at how the crossings work with the design. Mm -hmm. um, I, I know our teams have have really looked at it to try to improve it, and as Nick said, there is a painted uh, extension of, of Walker to to tighten that. Um, but you know, with some of the trucks and some of the loading, sometimes it is difficult to. Right. To, yeah, there are a lot of trucks there. Yeah. Yeah. May you good? Oh yeah, I'm good. Yeah. Okay, just making sure. Thank you. Hey, Paul. I'm gonna. Uh, go. I can't figure out how to raise my hand. So I, it upgraded and I'm not sure anymore. I can't find it, but. That's fine, David, go ahead. Quick question, is the bench part included in phase two or phase one? The way it was colored, I thought. And if it's on phase two, it really should be done earlier. Mm. I mean, so there's no reason that should be. Yeah, no, it is currently proposed in phase two, but we can certainly take a look at what we might be able to do in phase one while still preserving that circulation. I think that's a very fair comment. David, anything else? I know you can't raise your hand. Nope, that's good. Okay. Thanks. Okay. All right. Does the committee have any other questions? I'll come back if anything, but I do want to go to the community. They do have their, there's a few people with their hands up. That's all right. I'm just going to pivot really quick. Um, the first hand I see is Victor. Victor, you can go Paul, ahead. Paul, I'll, keep, I'll yeah. keep the timer. Paul, I'll keep the timer, but DOT can keep sharing their screen if that works. Yeah. Yeah, they just, yeah, go ahead. That's fine. Okay. It doesn't seem like it's going to be that much, but that's fine. Um, so, Victor, you have uh, two minutes. Okay. I, I grew up in this neighborhood, and, you know, I've been, I'm 70 years old, and, you know, Chinatown has never been um, impacted by all these pandemics and everything else. The city never considers Chinatown, you know, when they build a park house and it's open casino. They build stuff that we don't need, right? This corner is the worst corner to be sitting there. There's more traffic. Walker Street is death race 2000 because everybody's a shortcut going across canal becomes a death race. You, if you're not paying attention, you're gonna get run over. And you wanna put old people in there? Sorry, this place should be information. You get your information, you find out and you move on. We don't need trees. This, this, there's so much traffic in this thing. These trees do nothing. What we need is information. Where to sign up for COVID, where to get information for pandemic help. We need information for the community, like a community bulletin board. You know, we don't need a tourist attraction thing. You know, you know what I mean? You can have that, but we want the interaction thing, you know, to, so people can go somewhere else. You know, now you have apps, you know, you can just scan a freaking code, tells you where the restaurants to go, tells you where to go to find historical sites, just move on. You want the people to move on. You don't want people sitting there, homeless people, sticking their cell phones in there and hanging out and camping out. You don't want to make it comfortable for people to stay there. You want to have people move on, get their information, we need something that will help the community, not just kind of be another city. Oh, they built another thing, and what's it do? How many millions of dollars did they spend to renovate the park house in, in, in PS20? Uh, in, uh, Paul, that's two minutes. Thank you. Um, Victor, uh, thank you. 
Um, I don't know if I heard a question and all that. Uh, is there anything the DOT wanted to respond to or no? Well, I think I think we we've discussed this with Victor a, a while. I, I mean, um, you know, this it's a small site. It's a balancing act. You know, um, I, I think what did come out uh, of a lot of our feedback and most recent feedback was, yes, it is a place to not relax in, but to move through and to interact. And I think that's really the focus of the design to really improve circulation um, through the site. Um, there is a desire, you know, on a very hot summer day, even just walking through it with 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 a canopy of trees ex, uh, improves the experience of that three second walk through it. So I think we're trying to to do a both end appro approach here. And yes, I, I think the whole effort of the um, the interactive kiosk is exactly what uh, Victor is talking about. Um, you know, what, what type of content? And, uh, we we tested uh, uh, that kind of kiosk in a in a more simple way under the Manhattan Bridge a couple of years ago, and we saw that as really interactive and uh, um, popular. So that that's really the goal. So it, you know, it's really a both end situation. Thank you. Um, next hand I see is Mr. Wald. Yes, thank you. Uh, as Ellen said, as May said, as Victor also mentioned, it's an unsafe space right now and it won't make it safer than you design. It's, I, I agree that this design is beautiful and it's very inviting for people to, to, to use it. And, and it's very good that you do that, but then crossing to it is, is the death trap. Uh, traffic is significant, significantly reduced on Canal Street because of the Verrazano Bridge two-way tolling now, but uh, I, 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 it's pretty obvious that you're not gonna look into narrowing Canal Street and it's a shame. Why not do just that tiny block of Baxter Street, a shared street like the one on Broadway between 24 and 25th Street, a five mile per hour street where pedestrians, trucks can load and unload and, and uh, pedestrians can walk safer and it's guarded by planters and it's, uh, uh, it has way better wayfinding, wayfinding uh, signs. Uh, Chinatown is, as everybody knows on this call, is the most heavily pedestrian area in, in CB3 for sure. So please redesign the approach to that space because otherwise it will be the same unsafe way to get there. Uh, any responses? Or... So I, maybe Neil, I'll, I'll say that uh, yeah. you know our our focus based on the funding that we have from LMDC is on the triangle. That's why we're presenting that design today. Uh, we have been very cognizant of thinking about how this design will work in context of potential future improvements. Uh, we certainly see a, an opportunity, just like you're saying, for a potential shared street on Walker and, and looking at improving those uh, those approaches and that that street. So I, I, again, I, I can't commit to doing anything that's not my, my job, but I, I definitely know that that is a, a very uh, valid comment and something that we can uh, certainly take a look at uh, and how to move that forward in a, in a parallel track. Yeah, and I think we, we are uh, continually looking at the changes in pa patterns and traffic and, and, and making it safe. So I, I think that, you know, that that's a forward looking thing. Um, uh, you know, uh, if, if traffic patterns do change, you know, um, uh, we, we can adjust things uh, accordingly. I mean, right now, you know, I, we're, we're really, as Nick said, focusing on the triangle itself. Thank you. Um, I see one more hand. Uh, Andrea, um, I, I have a question for you. I know you mentioned something in the chat about um, a potential, uh, something you wanted to speak about called F Fixed Canal. I um, just want to know if your question is specifically about this project or if you wanted to bring that up because that seems like it's something uh, there's a completely different agenda item that you would want the community board three support on. 
Uh, well, I think that the uh, project ties in very well with the presentation by DOT and it has some of the same issues. And we would also like to do the presentation. So it's a combination. So I'll just address how it relates more toward the presentation and then we can discuss the other stuff later. Is that okay? Yeah, because it's not uh, on our agenda and I don't want to confuse anybody. I, 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 okay. So definitely, you know, I would like for you to email um, the office so we can maybe put it on as an agenda item. Um, okay. okay. Something that, we can take a look at. Yes, that's thank good. you. And I'll, so I'll just briefly uh, say what I intended. Sure. Anyway, I live in CB2 and I am a volunteer for transportation alternatives. And for the past 18 months, we've been doing this project called Fixed Canal. And we have resolutions into DOT from C CB1 and CB2 and Margaret Chin. So we're kind of waiting for a response on that. But it, it ties in very well with this project and everything else people have been mentioning. And that is to make Canal Street more pedestrian and cyclist friendly to make it much safer because there have been a lot of accidents and whatnot on that street. And so we just really have ideas to have wider sidewalks, to have seating, uh, which would be much more conducive to people kind of walking through the area, going to the restaurants, also getting rid of a lane of traffic, putting in uh, possibly a bicycle lane, having some areas for vendors. So it's a bigger project, but it does tie in with some of the same ideas to make things pleasanter for people that live in the neighborhood and for tourists alike. So that is our project. And this project has the support. We've gotten over a thousand, I think we have 1100 signatures at this point. And so it's kind of going along, but that's kind of where we are. And we'd like to see DOT act on that which aligns with this new project as well. So that's basically what I wanted to say. And we would like to go in front of the board at another date to describe the project more to people in CB3 and hope to get their support as well. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Um, oh, okay, I do see one more hand, Jason Gertz. Hello. Hey, just unmuted uh, myself here. Yeah, just to build on what Andrew is saying, um, we'd like an opportunity to, to present um, to the board. We, we have the support of CB1, 2, and Margaret Chin. And, um, you know, a, a lot of the things that are spoken about here, increasing pedestrian flow, creating a buffer from the very dangerous and noisy traffic, and creating spaces for people to gather, these are things that our campaign addresses with, with Canal Street aiming to stop uh, making this just a car sewer for people to go from New Jersey to Brooklyn and back, but a place, you know, that really should be the heart of uh, New York City's, you know, historical pedestrian, um, you know, neighborhoods here downtown. And, you know, why don't we also, you know, pedestrianize Walker Street? I mean, let's make this uh, like a real destination instead of just a, a, a perfect little postage stamp surrounded by, you know, a hellscape of cars. So, uh, you know, if DOT has, has any response to the, the, the CB1 or two resolutions, I'd love to hear that. If not, let's, let's um, present to CB3. Th thank you. I, and we could definitely put that on as a separate agenda item so we can get responses on any of that stuff. Um, I, I don't, you know, I know we're trying to keep it specific to this presentation tonight, but thank you for your input. Um, Robert Lee had his hand up. I'm sorry if I cut you off. My apologies. Go right ahead, Robert. Hello. <clears throat> Uh, I'm with Asian American Art Center. We've been in, uh, organized in our organization in Chinatown since 1974. I believe I'm probably the only organization that put on an exhibition of public art in Chinatown in uh, 1988. And uh, a lot of the information from that exhibition and all the artists who work, Asian American artists who work in public art were sent to most of you, I think, uh, certainly on the on this organization uh, the, that's handling this project. Uh, and I wanted to, uh, but I'm not getting any response. I was not invited to any of the meetings, uh, although I've come to your office and spoken. Um, and uh, I would like to remind people that um, uh, 
when this project started, when the kiosk was first discussed and built, um, a lot of promises were made that it was going to, th this triangle and the kiosk was going to serve the community. And a lot of the, um, the secrecy about Chinatown uh, needed to be opened up so people could learn more about the community. Now, uh, Think Chinatown has a lot of stuff on their website and is doing so much to try to enable uh, everybody in the city to learn more about the community. And uh, they're providing a lot of the information that uh, Victor was saying is needed. Um, so that, that kiosk never did that. It um, provided information about Broadway and refused even my flyers to take. So I think that that is still an important thing to include on the triangle. Um, and um, the, the other aspect is that um, this whole process went from uh, trying to find an image that would, uh, a piece of sculpture, that would present the community, but the piece of sculpture that was created absolutely didn't do that. And now in this phase, that whole effort of what, 10, 20 years has been thrown away and there's no longer any sculpture there. People like myself who might have uh, spoken towards this goal I don't know if there was anybody else there uh, who would do that. Certainly I wasn't invited to come and speak to that. So now that that aspect, which was the original purpose of this goal, which was started um, um, uh, by the, uh, you, you know, by uh, uh, the organization that does the, uh, uh, the cleanup for the community was to build a, um, a, 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 a bridge or a, um, a gateway for Chinatown. In fact, it's called a gateway, uh, but because the city uh, art or uh, cultural uh, bureaucracy refuses to see any uh, traditional uh, Chinese sculpture crossing or um, Canal Street um, or any of the other five gateway areas that it, where it could be built. That discussion has been going on for 20 years or has been eliminated. So the original goal started with the gateway and now there's no sculpture or image at all. So I'm just reflecting on how this process uh, does not meet the community's effort to create uh, a site which would benefit the community. Uh, and, and likely Chinatown, if you don't uh, sort of join hands with people like Think Chinatown who is doing this work, um, this triangle will be completed without ever really serving what the needs are of Chinatown. Thank you, Robert. Can DOT answer any of that? So, uh, Robert, I know, I know we talked about this before, and I, I, um, you know, one, one of the takeaways that we did get um, from our more recent stakeholder meetings, as well as the P Public Design Commission, I think is in line with what you're saying. I mean, they, they, they asked us to work with local organizations such as MOCA and Think Chinatown to develop and manage the content of this and the iconography. So I think that's an ongoing discussion uh, that we should have and uh, you, you, you really should be involved in those conversations. So, um, you know, I, I think that that's kind of a next step in our uh, refinement of, of the design of this. All right, thank you. Um, David Crane has his hand up. Yeah, so uh, there's been comments about the, um, you know, pedestrian safety on the street geometry surrounding this 
And, um, you know, I hadn't looked at it. I hadn't been thinking about it like that when you had the previous presentation. I, I was just overwhelmed by the, <laughs> by the large sculpture in the previous one. <laughs> but, so, but thinking about this, it really is a, a problem. My, my experience with that square is strictly when I'm walking west on Canal Street. And to cross that walker at that like broad angle, even though there's the bulb out, it, it's just a long stretch of, of walking. And I was surprised that you said it was one lane because that's not what I feel like I remember. Um, it just, it feels like a, with no traffic controls there, you just, there's a lot of cars to go through. There's actually no traffic controls on either of those two intersections at, at Walker Street. Um, and I know that they're both very close to the, the intersection that has a traffic light. And so that kind of, uh, I don't, it's hard to get traffic lights that are close to each other to work. I mean, visually people can't tell which one is which, for instance. Um, have you, have you uh, people considered looking at a larger context, like really all the way from Mulberry over to, oh my gosh, is it Center Street, the other one? Um, if all traffic off of Walker was really encouraged or forced to go onto Center Street, perhaps, they would be making two turns to get onto Canal, but at least they would be making them with traffic lights that I'm, I think they both have traffic lights. I'm pretty sure they do. Um, the idea of reversing Walker Street for a block, it's just gonna force a lot of traffic down Baxter Street. And then the next intersection they get to is right on uh, the park, uh, Columbus Park. You know, I don't think that's good. You're gonna have people then turning onto Bayard Street or, or being forced to go all the way down to Worth Street, which, you know, a lot of them are not gonna wanna do that. It'd take a while for people to learn that's what had happened. So I, I anyway, rather than talking about talking on and on about potential solutions. I'll just say it's really a problem that you're not able to put good traffic controls for the amount of traffic that uses Walker Street. And I would uh, hope that you could look at that problem. Maybe that's a different project, but um, I like the pedestrian friendliness that you're making in the plaza itself, but it's just not going to be friendly to cross Walker Street. Thank you. I mean, I can be safe to do it. Thank you. So, I, I mean, I'll, I'll respond just by saying I, I, I think you're, you've probably hit it on the head in that it, it would have to be a, a somewhat of a separate effort that runs in parallel. And I think that is something that we can definitely, and to some extent that we have been looking at in context of, you know, future proofing the design of the triangle space. We want to make sure that it can work, for instance, with a shared street on Walker, which, you know, may be a, a strong potential. I, I can't speak to the, the larger project scope, but certainly looking at the crossings right around the triangle uh, is, is something we will absolutely do uh, and try to think through how that plays into the overall uh, phasing of how this might get built. Because again, it, it may not happen all at once, but I think these are all valid points uh, and something that we would want to try to address as part of this, this effort. I don't know, Neil or, or Jennifer, uh, if, if there's, that's fair or if there's any, anything to add, but I, I think that these are all things that we have been thinking about. So I, I feel confident. Yeah, no, I, I think there's a number of things that were raised at this meeting that we, we should take a look at. In tandem, we have been looking at the broader area at other points. Um, you know, it's it's kind of a, a, a moving target, um, you know, but it, and it's very complicated, as you say. <laughs> um, you know, there has been a lot of talk about closing Walker and Baxter for a long time, and then the traffic studies, as I had seen them, you know, really per, did not really afford the opportunity to do that. But I, I think, you know, this has to be a continual look at pedestrian circulation and traffic movement. And um, I, th I think Jennifer, your office is also looking at that. So we, we should take a broader look. Yes, um, you know, we will actually bring this back to our colleagues and maybe we'll take a no look at those two uh, streets. Paul, well, is this something we can put in as a whereas in the resolution? Yeah, well, you just teed me up. Okay, so. Mm -hmm. Uh, I sent the committee out earlier a uh, potential draft resolution uh, about a couple hours ago, maybe around three o'clock. Um, does anybody have a motion to adopt it so we can start looking at it? And... Motion. 
When are you able to pull it up? Yep, just give me one second. Thank you. Uh, it says I could you, not share screen while the I, other I, Yeah, yeah. Oh. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So we have a draft reso that we put together today. Um, that was put together that we can fill in and choose to support or not support this project. Um, I know there was a lot of other concerns that were brought to the table tonight by the community and by board members. Um, but I think this is completely focused on this project. Um, I know in 2019, we didn't do a reso for this. Am I correct? Um, it wasn't in the minutes from July of 2019. There was just no, there was no resolution on this, but um, we can start looking at this. Um, let's start chopping this up. Um, Michelle, you said you wanted to put something in as a where act. Um, yes, um, I moved to adopt a clause that would say something like, whereas um, the community and the committee expressed interest for um, uh, a more comprehensive look at this, uh, should we call it an intersection or this this location um, in order to make it safer um, for pedestrians, something like that. The crosswalks. Uh, I like it. The, 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 let's say the- Specifically. Yeah, I, I would say at the street geometry um, of Walker Street between Center Street and, uh, and Mulberry Street, with a focus on, on on making the crosswalks safe. That's what we want. I think Ellen, you were saying something similar just now. But but if you would, if, let's say those two blocks, the, the 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 two blocks of Walker Street between Center Street and Mulberry Street. Yeah, that's the it's more dangerous a... one. And then there's there's another one across Baxter. Um, so it's that little one. Right. So, so it's, I mean, which is like as dangerous. Yeah. So Here, it's not as because there are no traffic controls. Right. It, there are no traffic lights at the intersections of Walker with Baxter and and the canal is creating unsafe pedestrian conditions. Right. Right. Can I make okay. a suggestion, Paul? Susan, go ahead. I see your hand. Um. So I wouldn't. Where you're putting it now, it doesn't belong there. What right. you need, if that says where the current proposal includes. I think so Wendy's just taking notes. Oh yeah, I'm just like taking notes so that way I don't like forget later on. Okay, so I would, um, what I would do since it is a separate project, I, I would suggest that when you put, put it at the, as a last whereas and first put in everything about this project and then have the last whereas be to also include a study of these things. So it's clear that you that this is something you're looking for, but it's a separate project. Yeah, can we capture the language where the uh, the the lack of traffic lights at the intersections of Walker Street with Baxter Street and Canal Street is contributing to unsafe pedestrian conditions. Of Baxter and Walker and Center and Canal, is that right? And, and, and Walker and Canal. The intersections, of, yeah, Baxter and Walker and Walker and Canal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the, and the street that the most traffic on is, is Walker straight through, but they've got two intersections mm -hmm. in a row, the last two with no traffic lights. So anyway, if you said that lack of traffic lights is, is, is contribute, contributing to Unsafe. Unsafe pedestrian. Yeah, pedestrian conditions. I think that gets to the heart of it. And we would, and uh, we, you know, we, we would like uh, there to be a, we would like DOT to, um, 
to introduce, to propose um, safety improvements. Yeah, focusing on Walker between Center and Mulberry. Right, and we don't need to go into more detail in, in written form here, but where they're saying reverse walker, actually, if they were reverse walker for that whole stretch from Canal, the cars would get onto it, but, uh, well, maybe from, from, from Baxter over, but you know, that's the kind of thing we would like them yeah, to look at. I don't think we should back be with proposing proposal. solutions. Yeah. Right, but I was, I was just sort of explaining for the members of the public who have been you know, encouraging us to do something like this. If we just state it this way, then they, they could, they, that would be a natural thing that they would look at because they would look at a lot of alternatives, hopefully, and hopefully they would come up with a uh, solution that would work for all the various uh, outcomes. Should we take out this part then and just leave it as, leave it as like the second bullet then? Yeah, maybe we need an adverb clause about proposed, you know, yes, I agree. You can cut out the, well, community, community, that was a good clause. The community and committee expressed uh, concern about, and then you can go to the rest of it, con expressed concern about the lack of traffic lights. And then merge it with a bullet below, and we got the whereas almost, almost all of what we should say at the intersection. And then where it says Walker and Canal, where is it is contributing, you could say which is, and it would be grammatically. Which is contributing to. I think that that now is grammatically correct. Yeah, maybe a comma before the which, yes. Right, and then a period before the we, but there were, then I think we need an adverbial clause at the, at the next sentence there about when we expect them to do it or that we expect them to do it as a, as a separate parallel project, or we would like them to. Mm -hmm. Susan, maybe you have language for that or some from DOT um, like them. Maybe we can get some advice from DOT, but I would su suggest that ask for them to come back to um, community board three um, with this, you know, with a proposed, yeah. with the proposed um, improvements. Okay, so we would like DOT to come back to CB3 at a future date, proposing yeah. safety improvements. So that sentence above, we could just add it in the sentence above. We would like DOT to come back to CB3 in the future. Okay, I was actually thinking above, but sentence above, just we're gonna add sentences between propose and safety or before, before propose in the sentence right above that. So I just jump in really quick. That, that, that last few sentences, we would like DOT to propose safety improvements. That looks like it needs to be part of our the, the actual resolve clause. Um, I I would not suggest it's not this design. This but this, therefore be resolved. We ask them to come back in the future for a separate thing. Oh, it's yeah. something we would ask them to respond to. Correct. So yeah. leave it like so that, and we'll do that a separate one. Now. Yeah. Therefore, be it addition or yeah, be it also resolved. I think yeah, it's right above. Is usually no? The word. no, I think I, I actually think it's. You have it right say, above. I think it's right there. I think it's yeah, actually. Yeah, it's already right there. there. It's already there. Don't worry about it. No, it's What's already, already there? Community board three right requests the DOT come the back to the community board. board with a final design proposal. But we want them to also come back at a future date with a different design proposal. So I do think we need another. Therefore, be it further resolved is the usual language. A different design proposal for the street geometry or for traffic controls. Yes. So we do need a separate clause for that. So if you yeah. come back to the community board th three um, with, uh, with, with a separate proposal to address pedestrian safety concerns for the blocks of Walker Street between Center and Mulberry. Yep. Yeah. 
Right. And I would say, let's say caused by the street geometry and traffic signaling for the blocks. And then from above where you got for the block of, I would cut and pick, cut out the, for the block of center street between, stick it at the end there. You see right above your cursor from the word of, There, Cut, put that right at the end. I'm sorry that this is so detailed. All right, now it just needs a little touch up and it'll be good. I love it. The block, the blocks, yeah, get rid of the second, the block. And it's the it's the two blocks of Walker Street. We're getting so close. Did you say two blocks of Walker? Of Walker Street. Yeah. yeah. So the word center has changed to there. It's Walker, yeah. Okay, that's all addressed. Thank you. All right. Well, we still need to fill in all everything about. I mean, now we got to fill in the bullet right, right, other stuff. Yep. All right. Let's uh, fill in the bullet points on that on the current proposal. Uh, I'm trying to play compare and contrast from the last presentation, but. Maybe DOT could help at the current proposal includes, um, you know, I think we have the, the trees. Um, they could probably give us the points, right? Yeah, I think they can. DOT? I, I'm sorry, Susan, but. We're trying to fill in. We didn't, we couldn't get information from you before the meeting. Yeah. Um, so we're trying to fill in now where it says, Whereas the current proposal includes, we want to memorialize oh, okay. there. If you could give us those points. Sure. Um, can, can we send them to you or, or you want them? We have to vote on them tonight. Okay. I um, tried to get you to send them to us. So um, let's see, I, I think I have it. Um, um, we have the trees, you want to say, so, uh, to retain the trees, do you want to say that? So we, yeah, we, we have um, we have the uh, retention of the existing uh, five trees, and addition of uh, new trees. Um, at least uh, the addition of uh, four new trees. And um, I think you want to mention uh, a kind of. Uh, a, a buffer, a planted buffer and curb along Canal Street to safeguard pedestrians. Um, and then we, we want to say an interactive uh, digital um, uh, screen. We call it wayfinding screen or? Yeah, I, I, we, I, we've been calling it an interactive digital interface uh, that has uh, it, uh, current information and exhibits. I would say current neighborhood information. Neighborhood information, yes. Um, I, I, I think you want to mention also, you know, uh, improved east-west circulation and connection through the site. Right. right. Is, is there anything else, Nick? I think those are the seating. Key. Seating. Think, yeah, the My seating and the permeable pavement would be the other two big yeah. design items, I think. 
Yeah, it's great. And the seating. It's on the yeah. south side, right? Yeah, that, that's where it is now. Um, I mean, uh, uh, yeah, fixed seating. Again, as Susan mentioned, we did in other scenarios had more seating on both sides, but as Victor and others have you know, pointed out, you know, this is a circulation uh, node as well. And you know, we want to create the right balance of that. Uh, and then <laughs> the other design element would be the uh, additional lighting for the site. Oh yeah, right. That should do it, right? Yeah. So we could take out the highlighted yellow stuff. And then you can put those same bullet points down into the resolve clause. So then would this be included or changed? Include, take out the changed. Okay. Are we done with that? I mean, Paul, so. it, it, actually, if you were to say, if there's no objections, then we'll Amend, then it's amended, and then we'll know we can bring up another topic. Wait, you have this highlighted yeah. stuff at the bottom. Yeah, I'm just mm -hmm. waiting for some. Well, the highlight is approved, disapprove. I'll, I'll get to that in a second. Okay. Um, so if there's no, no questions on that, go ahead, Debbie. You already have your, you have your hand up. Yeah, so it's this is on the previous one that we just set up. I'll, I'll point out that Center Street is fully in CB2, so the block between Bay Baxter and Center is in CB2. Are we stepping on toes at all by mentioning yes. that that yes, block absolutely. is because, okay, so I'll just point out that we don't really propose any changes for that, but that is part of the circulation problem that we should have them look at. Um, and I also will point out that CB2 isn't always as respectful as we tend to be. About when have they things. not been, David? Well, I mean, they, they have- don't. They don't actually because they're in close touch with us on all this stuff, really. Okay, well, I, I've heard uh, recommendations that they reverse a block of traffic within CB3 that was adjacent to Bowery Street. Maybe I'm misremembering, maybe it wasn't like a, a, a motion. Susan, do you think that we are being, not being sensitive or have we done it in an appropriate way? Um, we're asking them to look at something. Or are we asking them to change it? We can ask them to change something in another community board. But if I believe we have not asked for a change. I believe we have asked for a look at it, but can we review okay. the language? We've asked them to propose a change, but we didn't specify like what we just so have I'll, enough language to explain what the, the DOT took this, uh, the original proposal to uh, community board two, and they looked at it, but they wouldn't vote on it because it was CB3. Well, we're not voting on a proposal. We are asking for yeah. a proposal no. to come. Yeah, I'm agreeing with you. I'm just saying that they, they also try to be careful. Yeah, we're asking for a separate proposal to come back with. I don't think we're voting on something for that. Yeah, no, I, th I think this is OK. This doesn't look bad. All right, David, did you have anything else? Or is that what was it? No, no, I just wanted to make sure about that. Great. OK, so I'm going to just start taking the temperature of the committee right now. Um, how do we feel about this? Thumbs up, thumbs down, before, um, and we'll vote on it. If, is there any, well, let me ask this. Is there any other amendments that anybody wants to make to what you've seen so far, what we've read so far? Is that a no across the board? 
Okay. Um, we will. Okay. Well, I'm going to ask you right now. Um, you can raise your hands on the on the uh, Zoom feature for the community for the committee members. Do we approve? Where has Ray's hand moved to? Oh my gosh, I'm getting so old. I can't. It's under reactions. Well. It's under reactions oh, for you. Reactions right again. Okay. It's under reactions for the old Zoom, for the new Zoom. It's under the participant list. All right, David, David gave the thumbs up. Tariq has his hand up. Uh, Wendy uh, has her hand up. Ellen, Michelle. We good oh, with this? I had, I had the thumbs up. I don't know what happened to it. Oh, I, 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 I probably couldn't see it. Sorry. Um, thank you. Um, Michelle, I, I couldn't see yours. You just say yes or no. It's fine. Yeah, this is fine. Thank you. All right. Thank you. All right. So last thing we're going to do, we will put call, approval. Is that a roll call vote that you just did? I just asked for the approval or disapproval. We'll do the, should I do a roll call oh. vote now or should I do it after um, when we close up for the night? I would do it now. Yeah, I would too. Okay, so let's take a vote. Wendy, go right ahead when you're ready. Okay, Paul Rangel. Yes. Michelle Cooper Smith. Yes. Wendy Lee, yes. Lee Berman? Yes. David Crane? Yes. Felicia Cruikshank? She's not Felicia? On. She's not on. She's not on. Ellen Lowe? Yes. And Tariq Ramos? Yes. All right. Thank, thank you very much. Okay. Um, all right. Thank you, committee. Um, One last. One last yes. thing on the item. Susan, should we be sending this to CB2? I talked should it be to on the SEC list? You I copy them on everything. Okay. Yeah. Do, do you think it's worth mentioning about when we say we want a proposal? Do you know, we're work, working with conjunction with CB2 and CB3, or is that yeah. just overkill? Okay. No, no, I'll mention it though. We're very, it'll be fine. Well, thank you. Um, before we move on to the next agenda item, I'm just going to ask DOT to take into consideration a lot of the comments from the community tonight to, before you come back with the final design proposal. Um, but thank you for coming on, sharing your presentation, and uh, we are done with this agenda item. And thank you for the community who came out to, on this specific item. That thank you said, all very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Um, all right. Let's go to our next agenda item, which will be the traffic issues that have been going on. Um, we, it was, was it our last agenda item last month in December? It was like, it made it, it made the cut. Now it's still our last agenda item, but it's agenda item number three instead. So we got some time to talk about it. Um, there's originally a thought of maybe potentially putting some resolutions together in regards to the different uh, traffic issues going on. Um, Michelle, you have the PowerPoint, right? No, I yeah, don't want to pull it on. Yeah, let's pull it up. Let's pull it up. Okay. So, I have folders for different years now for for community boards. So I have to go back to 2020. Happy, happy, happy 2021. In case I didn't tell anybody, happy new year. All right. Um, while she gets that going, um, we're go I'm going to reference the presentation from last month um, because what I want to do for us, this item specifically on our agenda, it's pretty, I don't want to call it vague, but it's general. You know, we're talking about specific issues that are within this presentation. So what I want to do over the next month, February, March, April, is take specific issues from each, from this presentation, whether it's street cameras or um, issues on Delancey Street or anything like that, and turn them into singular agenda items where we can 
do more research and get more information on a specific item instead of putting one big hodgepodge thing together. So I want us to think about what could be out of, out of this presentation, what should be the first agenda item we really put on for February so we can attack with a resolution and put many resolutions together over the next couple of months on all these different traffic issues that are affecting um, CB3. So I think the first thing we kind of really been thinking about was the whole street camera issue, even though that's a state kind of thing. So I know Susan's on. So Susan, um, we, we discussed this, you and I briefly earlier. Um, I know it's a state issue. Is there any way we can get state elected on to a meeting, hopefully next February, uh, next February, February is next month, um, for to explain to us the camera stuff and what kind of support we can actually put forward? Because that seems to be a big thing that's um, coming upon us. And I know you emailed us earlier about it. So if you could just give us some explanation on what well, we Well, it's... It seems that um, Brad Harman's already working on other camera issues. So it would seem that he'd be the likely uh, person to ask and um, have his transportation or you know who's ever working on that to ask them to come. Um, and I can certainly um, you know ask them what tell them what we're looking for and ask if they could come uh, work with the committee next month. I don't have a lot of time to get a confirmation. That's the problem. Up now. No, okay, I'm just kidding. Uh, let, let's see what we can do, but that'll be one thing. Um, so I'm going to just ask the committee. I know, Lee, you mentioned something earlier about, you know, what are we going to do? So that's that was my plan, um, to start breaking these down into small, instead of just biting the whole cookie at one time, we got to go into piece by piece. Um, is there something Lee you wanted specific out of the, the presentation that you wanted that you want to see as an agenda item that we can put on February, March, April that we can just start breaking down? Rand and Clinton Street, the the thoroughfare to the Williamsburg Bridge that goes through uh, the Lower East Side, the Lancy Street, Essex Street, Grand Street, FDR. Okay, Grand Grand and Clinton Street thoroughfare. That's the main one. Okay, so that's one. Right. I say that that seems like it's, it's really that's a large street geometry issue because it's also all the traffic coming up Clinton from the south. I, I mean, I guess if you say the intersection, it's obvious we're talking about the two corridors. So it's two intersecting corridors that are both headed there. I mean, it's a large issue. Is it helpful to narrow it to this point? Um, maybe it is. Yeah, I haven't really thought this through. <laughs> yeah, I, I, when I was thinking about how we were going to attack this item tonight, you know, I just want to see how much further we can break things down. Um, yeah, I just I, I want to agree um, with sort of the largeness of this, right? Because if I I were to think about like you know what's outside my window, if I would just just say Chatham Square. I mean, that's a lot, right? So mm -hmm. what what exactly do you want me to think about? And how should I look at it? Oh, go small. Um, let's, instead of, you know, you're thinking about Chatham Square, what's specific about Chatham Square? Is it a certain block, certain street? Like what? what's something that you want to attack out of these presentations, that, uh, about this presentation, about the traffic, about anything, the safety issues, pedestrian issues, like legal left turns, things like, anything of that sort. like. I just right. want us to think, go well, ahead. One of the issues with Chatham Square is that it's an intersection, right? It's a meeting point for all of these streets and how those streets are facilitated and how traffic is facilitated, um, thereby increasing, um, you know, safety issues, right? For pedestrians, bicyclists, delivery people, et cetera. Um, right. And so I'm not quite sure how to analyze the situation, right? Because Yes, it's a, it's a traffic flow issue. It's also closing of Park Row or that section of Park Row issue, right? Where we've necessitated all these other, we have to re redirect traffic, right? So then as you're redirecting it, it doesn't mean that traffic is reduced, right? And so now that Worth is finally done um, being worked on, it's, it's a little bit better, but 
nevertheless, the danger for pedestrians, I'm not sure, has been lessened. Okay, so we gotta find a way to, as a, as a board, try to attack that safety issue because it hasn't really fixed been fixed. Even there's some improvements, but it hasn't been fixed, right? So, what I'm probably gonna ask out of you, Ellen, is to draw something up, an email next week or so. If you want to write something up specific for that, you can. Like, you don't have to think about it right now and like be pressed to say, oh, like, well, let's put this on. No, just run it by, send it to us so we can document exactly what we, you want to do about it, right? Um, what's next? So, so we got two things. We got Grand Street, thinking about that, Chatham Square, thinking about that. So those are the big portions, and then we want to break them down even more. What else we got? Well, I just want to reiterate, I mean, I guess you already talked about this, but I, maybe traffic cameras aren't the right thing, but just overall like passive enforcement, because um, like I, I saw like um, the acting DOT commissioner mentioned about like cameras for bike lanes, you know, so just like thinking more about how we can potentially advocate for um, passive enforcement um, because, you know, it just enforcement's not happening right now. So until we have congestion pricing, as David talked about, like, what are the passive enforcement options that we have? And it sounds like that might be mostly at the state, but I just don't know enough. So that's something we can go to DOT with. I don't know. So DOT doesn't do enforcement. Well, but just, well, who, who's, okay, so I shouldn't say they not, they who, who can come to us to explain what are the passive enforcement options for traffic issues because Is we have traffic and for, oh, sorry, passive enforcement really means some street geometry thing that slows traffic down or directs traffic. And camera, in certain I mean, ways. camera, like camera, that. like that's a big passive enforcement option, but I just mean that like we have such a large traffic issue in our neighborhood and so much of it is from illegal behavior. How do we passively enforce that if possible? Because it does not seem like NYPD is enforcing it, even though I've called a million times. So that's that's my point. So Susan, it sounds like the, the NYPD Department of Transportation or, or Transportation section um, needs to, to come. It's the, no, it's the, well, it's, it's the pre, generally the precinct or I don't think this would be mostly uh, traffic. I think the traffic, you know, I would have to inquire. I think um, this would be, probably be more the precinct or they could tell us at least what's going on because they interact, but um, it would be PD and we would have to see who in PD would be the best to come. It might even be one, you know, someone from one police plaza. We'd have to see who would be the best to come. That's fine. Uh, as long as we get somebody here who can start explaining what the enforcement is like. Passive. But we need, I, I think, you know, what you just asked Ellen to do, it'd be also good to do for this to be, you know, write up something sort of specific on where the problems are and to give to them uh, to be able to come. Okay, so, so they seems to be the number one here on the, like, so I see the legal left turns. What, what? Um, maybe Michelle, this is something we can put together about. Yeah. What, what, what should we, we ask PD if we have them I, come, come? Illegal left turns, um, driving the wrong way down streets, um, uh, parking in bike lanes, driving in bike um, lanes. driving in bike lanes. Yeah. Um, Thank you, Lee. Um, delivery trucks using the median as a parking spot. Okay. Might, so, yeah, it sounds to me like this might be the transportation cop at the precinct. Um, but what I'll take what you write up and and pass it by them to make sure. But respect respectfully, um, it, we this committee has had a transportation officer over the years and very little has improved. I would actually say nothing has improved. Uh, it took somebody from the community to speak to the mayor to get a traffic agent at Grant and Clinton that I think is no longer there. So I think it really is time to try to go up to one PT and maybe get somebody uh, from the transportation section uh, there 
so that they can hear what we have been concerned about in this community for now, I, I think three or four years at least, since the, the precinct, as, as much as they've tried to help, has not been able to. Hey, Lee, do you think that having a traffic agent at that intersection was good and should be done always? Yeah, I wonder if we could, maybe that could be added as a really focused agenda item. I think we would have to do research among ourselves somehow to figure out where pressure needs to be brought to make that, get that funded. Who has Bill de Blasio's number? He seems to be the only way to get anything done, honestly. Uh, well, I mean, you know, you can also create, well, media pressure. I, mean, I know media doesn't work quite the same way they used to. Why don't you start by asking why they no longer have someone there? Which, which is something you know I could do by email tomorrow. Let's let's find out what's going on before we before we start uh, telling the papers that the one's there. <laughs> yeah, this is going on YouTube tomorrow morning, so uh, they they might hear it anyway. Um, yeah, so, okay, so we I, get like thousands of views every time we post one of these meetings, Paul. So uh, how did you know it was all me? Oh, sorry. No, uh, you're right, you're probably blasting into your mailing list. <laughs> you only need one or two of the right people. <laughs> so, okay. So I got four things here. I got Brandon Clinton. And, we, and if, if you want to even break it down even further than that in an email to me, that's perfectly fine to the office. So we can do that. Chatham Square, Ellen, that's, that's all you. You know, you can break that further down and we can figure something out there. We're talking about the passive enforcement, right? That's, uh, that's something we have in there. And then the traffic agents and why they're no longer there. So I got four things right now we've kind of brought out of this. What else do we got? David Crane, go ahead. I see your hand. About the passive enforcement thing, someone on the committee, or perhaps we could ask the office, needs to do some research about the, some passive enforcement options, um, say automated ticketing options, like red light cameras, those used to be very restricted about how many could be done in New York City. They put up fake ones, mock cameras. You didn't necessarily know where the cameras were. I know it loosened up. Anyway, what are the restrictions on that? And how do you think we can advocate to have them concentrated more in our area? Um, not all of them, not all the things are heard in your list are of that nature, but some are. I think that's why we wanted Brad Harman to come so we could ask yeah. the state for legislation to allow for more of the cameras. Yeah, I agree. I think that's something why I think definitely for February, if we could get um, State Senator Hoyleman to come down and or come on to Zoom with us for it, I think that would help us out tremendously. Um, especially when we're talking about those enforcement options, I think that seems to what it comes down to all the time is enforcement, right? Talked about it at the town hall. It was all about enforcement, yeah. you know. And now here we are with this. Okay. okay. Um, so what? You know, I can try and get someone from Brad's office for February. All these other items are—they're very complicated, and there's no way I can get this confirmed in the next two or three days. It's going to happen. Uh, let, let, let's start with state senator's office okay. and and go from there. We put that on for February. And once I get the emails from everybody, once you start bringing everything down, you know, figure March, you know, that's what it's looking like to maybe put those as agenda items, all right? Um, but that's the way I think I, I think we can attack this better. You know, like I, we have all the issues in front of us. And we're not even scratching the surface. You know, if I walk up and down Avenue C, you know, I can even start talking about how, how, how crappy it is down here. So on, a, on my, uh, my side of uh, LES in the district. So we can, I'll start thinking of stuff on, uh, on my end here. Um, so that's what I would like. Uh, is there anything else we, we like to break down? This the, Sorry this guys, I'll be, it'd be 10 seconds. I put it in the chat. I also raised my hands. I'm not a member of the committee. Yeah, Just I know that. Let, yeah. <laughs> maybe bring up a loading zone around the district. 
Because sure, I'll bring it up. I'll put it in the email. Loading zones. I read it. I saw it in the chat. Thank you. Thank you. So that's and that's been part of our district needs, right? So yeah, I think it, it was. Is, but I've also seen recently a brand new thing um, that they're doing in Brooklyn called community loading zones. And I think if I could, I would like to be able, if the committee would like, to ask DOT to come talk to us about what what this new option is. Sure. That sounds cool. I, if it's something that I, it's, I'd love to hear. Yeah. I'm with it. Is this neighbor, neighborhood loading, loading zones? I think this is what they were mentioning as a pilot, right? And we were like begging them to bring it to us. <laughs> um, I saw it actually in um, uh, a Google alert about community boards in Brooklyn is where mm. it's the first time I've seen this actual term. Yeah, I just Google it. So it's called neighborhood loading zones. They're yeah. doing, they have, it seems like they have multiple phases, including some in Manhattan, but not in our district. I can, I'll put it in the uh, I think, call I'll send it to in the chat. Sure. I think that would be cool um, for, for them to come. Thanks for the that. suggestion, Susan. Who's the Google alert? So I have Google alert for community boards. Hmm. Okay. Uh, so there, there we go. We've got the loading zone option on there. Um, yeah, and if there's anything that the committee wants, it has, you know, Tariq, I think you're on Avenue D, right? You know, this is street issues down there. I know that's bad. You got the drive and you got everything right there. Houston, that, that's crazy right there. So this stuff there, you know, let us know. And so that way we can start figuring out. I know um, my brother-in-law comes and picks me up all the time and we drive down the drive and um, that is is crazy. And I'm seeing it from a driver's point of view. And it's, I, it's tough for everyone. Let's tough for everyone. Um, okay. What, if we got nothing else, I'm gonna close up shop for the night. It's about 8.30. Uh, uh, for that item, or could I bring up yeah. another possible agenda item for next month? Sure, go ahead. Um, sure. It's something that actually you mentioned, um, and that's to do a resolution regarding issues, um, issues that were brought up in the town hall. Um, I'm hoping um, that the committee now sees why it's so frustrating to try and deal with constituent complaints on um, anything to do with open restaurants. Um, I think there's huge systemic problems. Um, just to let you know two things at the town hall, when I said DOB does not enforce the indoor dining and the outdoor structures and the, um, the guy said, yes, we do. So I gave them an address to inspect and I got an email the next day and they said, oh, I guess there's some confusion. We don't really enforce that. And then um, another time when I said, uh, when Kyle from DOT said that DOB enforces the, I think it was the awnings or the roofs on the structures. And I said, no, they don't. DOB the next day called me and said, yeah, you were right. We just didn't say anything. <laughs> so it shows a lack of knowledge and jurisdiction and everything else. And I was hoping that the committee um, could write a resolution about the larger systemic problems and um, how it shows that community input is necessary for the next stage. All right, I got two hands up. David Crane, go ahead. I think you should do Trevor first. Oh, sorry, I didn't see it. There you go, Trevor. Go ahead. Just real quick, has uh, sanitation or DEC presented uh, to this committee about the clean curb program? No. No. Uh, if, if possible, and if this isn't an urgent matter within the next six months, if we could see a presentation, because uh, they are, they have stated that they're reinstating this uh, policy of where they get the garbage off of this, the sidewalks and they put it on the street. It does require some neighborhood organization or a group to do it, but a pretty good program. Um, and if we can get it before this committee, we could probably form an opinion on it. I'll investigate um, having them come. Right, thank you. Thanks, Trevor. That's cool. I like that. Um, go on, um, back to you, Dave. Okay. Um, I 
this is like what Susan was talking about in the open restaurants program. I am very concerned that they are even considering making it permanent, um, given that they have no idea how to enforce it and the coordination. It's just like it's never going to have enforcement. It's always going to be a problem. It just feels to me like someone who wants the restaurants to have control of the street bed is, is, is uh, behind it. And I would love to see us stop it um, until such time as they can do any sort of adequate enforcement. It would be great to create much more pedestrian friendly um, intersections at intervals. It would be wonderful for, for making a, a more pedestrian friendly city. But I terrified that they are about to do it now and make it permanent. Based on our terrible experience, you know, it was done as a emergency measure during COVID and it has not been such a good experience and they're planning on solidifying it now. Anyway, is it way too early to try to do that or can we get ahead of them actually introducing legislation and say, so it's too early. It is, going, it is going to be made permanent. It is going to be made permanent, but you don't have to weigh in on that now. But I think we have to weigh in on what the problems are that exist. Um, Definitely. When you say it is going to be made, are you just predicting legislation is going to pass because it, it almost surely will? Or has it been? It does it's require been extensively discussed and planned. And um, the issue right now has, I think they've already voted on it. Actually, I don't know if anyone remembers. I think they've already voted on making it permanent, but they haven't um, they haven't um, come up with any of the details. I believe, I'm not positive, but I believe- well, It sounds like we will need to have a meaty whereas about this then, the importance of all the other issues that Susan has brought up that we learned about. I right? thought- Immedi A meaty whereas about, given that the legislation is moving forward, blah, 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 the regulation, regulatory scheme becomes really important. Susan, I, we're, gonna do this, we're gonna do this next month, right? Pardon? This is for next month, this is for next month right? I, I, I would like it to, and I, I would actually prefer that it be kept separate and just say these are the problems because they're horrendous. They're horrendous problems. And I prefer uh, that I mean, everyone knows why, you know, that things need to be fixed. I would like to focus on, on what's wrong because it's catastrophically wrong. And it's on a, for another agenda item. And I don't think it actually has been voted on. I, if I recall correctly, Tony's office said that there was proposed legislation to make it mandatory that she signed on to, but I don't know that it has been voted on. I may be wrong, but I, I don't think it has been voted to be permanent yet. Well, we'll We'll check. I thought that city council did, but because I was upset that they we didn't in, weren't informed of the opportunity to testify. But um, that's an easy thing for me to check, or any of us to check. But yeah. regardless, what I would really like to put down in writing the systemic problems that are current that um, that the program is currently experiencing. That's fine. We can put that on for February. I got no problem with that. Um, that, that that's, yeah, go ahead, Ellen. Sorry, it sounds like a very um, meaty topic. Would we be able to just dedicate a meeting to putting together, some, uh, putting something together post town hall, as well as additional issues around the outdoor dining stuff? Well, I think you know if we we already have all the all the issues, so they could be drafted before the committee. I don't know. I mean, you know, I think they became obvious. That I maybe I'm wrong, but I thought they became pretty obvious at the at the town hall. Yeah, the one thing I really got out of the town hall was that I was more confused leaving it after I uh, started it. So. Um, we definitely got to draft something. So I, I understand what you're saying, Ellen, though, in terms of uh, it is quite a meaty topic. Um, but let's see how we can break it down as much as we can to uh, attack the issues that we did get out of that. What we did I mean, get out of the, the systemic issues of enforcement, lack of enforcement, who does what, things like that. And I think we'll be able to draft something and put something together. Um, Susan, I'm sure you and I will talk 
a little bit more about it sure. and how I, we will we will I, I think it's on. not going to be difficult because we already have in writing all the questions where we elicited this information correct so yeah. it, it's, or, it's all already in writing it's just a question of turning it around into describing a condition instead of asking about it copy copy that sound that sounds sounds like a plan okay um does anybody have anything else from, from the committee in terms of things you need to share and talk about essential items questions comments concerns jokes poems lyrics no okay all right, so that being said, we're gonna wrap up for the night. It's about 8.36, um, take final roll call vote to close out. Hey, uh, um, sorry, Phil. Uh, it's Brian Lewis from the Borough President's Office. Can I make an announcement really quick? Sure, Brian, go right ahead. I just wanted to remind everybody that we're in the middle of community board applications. Um, uh, that's uh, reapplications and new applicants. Uh, I will, if I can, uh, drop the link in the chat, but it is available on our website as well. Um, and yeah, it, it, please do reach out to me with any questions as well about that. All right, Brian, you should be able to post the link in the chat uh, right now. Um, okay, that being said, thank you, Brian. Um, I think this was relatively productive tonight. Wendy, close us out, and then I'll go ahead. Okay, uh, Paul Rangel? Yes. Michelle Cooper-Smith? Yes. Wendy Lee? Yes. Lee Berman? Yes. David Crane? Yes. Felicia Cruikshank? How do you? Ellen Lowe? Yes. Tariq Ramos? Yes. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thanks. See y'all later. Have a good night, guys. We are adjourned. <laughs>